Hi everybody. The parcel has arrived. <laughs> oh boy. And it's uh, about 4.30 p.m. here. And it was uh, sent yesterday morning uh, from Ontario. Standard overnight delivery, it says. So wow, that was quick. And let's see what we got here. This is exciting. I think it's been like three or four years since I've ordered a plant because I ordered the dendrobiums in 2017 and they were just babies. So imagine this is a baby too. Once I get into it. Yeah, from Toronto. It's from Roehampton Orchids in Toronto, Ontario. So, uh, very quick delivery. Don't have to worry about the cold nights. Um, I'll probably repot it tomorrow because it's watering orchid day tomorrow. It's a busy day tomorrow. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's pretty exciting. And I'll be joining this up to the repotting video. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Boy, when you when you like opening parcels fast and they come sealed like that. So pretty exciting. You know there was a little part where you could put uh, whatever you want and I put I grow my orchids in this bark. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how it's coming, but I did put that. is exciting. I was out watering the lemon tree and I seen, I keep these the uh, armorillus in there all winter and I had all the other ones bloom and I didn't think this one was going to bloom and it's loaded. It's got three stalks and lots of flowers coming. Okay, boy this is packed really good. Now I've know, been known to drop things so there's some really, wow, this is good. Now, I could pronounce this wrong very easily. So it says, Roehampton Orchids, uh, Jacqueline's Orchids. I usually pot in just bark because there was a place to put that. So that's what I put, and that's what they circled in red. Um, they say, thank you and happy growing. Thank you for so supporting Roehampton Orkins. We hope that you are excited to welcome your new plant baby. Our girl goal is to ensure each plant excels in its new home. However, due to the nature of shipping live products, there are sometimes circumstances when a plant does not arrive in optimal condition. If you have any questions at all, please take some photos and reach out to us immediately upon receiving your order and stay in touch. Thank you. So, so far everything looks excellent. Oh wow, there's a little card here. It says phone numbers, the Instagram, uh, Gmail. So they're certainly giving you... Oh, I've got two babies in here. here. I only ordered one. Oh, you guys, it is a baby, but it's beautiful. Oh, I am excited now. It says here, now I can show you, this is exciting. Um, it says here, this is all I ordered. So, very exciting. <laughs> Okay, I'll put this box down so it came wrapped in paper and it also came very nicely in this insulated uh, foil box. Very, very neat, very tidy, and it looks very healthy. But there's two. I know, I know. I'm so excited. Put it in a little pot. A 
little cotton batting all around. Oh, it's so sweet. It has a little moss around it for shipping. It's just a baby. And it's got beautiful roots in there. So it is in moss because quite often when they're babies, they are babies. And you know what I will do? I'll surprise you when I tell you because probably what I will do in a little pot is a bit, mix some of the moss in with a little bit of the bark and let it slowly adjust because it's special and it's a species. So here it comes a close look. It has three leaves and you can see down in here it's still nice and damp and the roots look really good, really good. So I'll probably, but how come I have a second one? I don't know. This is a real surprise. I'm going to put it out again. I think I should cut the bottom. Wow. This is exciting. Careful. More cotton batten, which is a really good idea. Oh, don't mind me if I get really... This is... This is, oh, this is Roehampton Orchids Fell Alfinia. Somehow or other, I got a special little, look at this. Look at this. Let's see if I can, I'm getting that right. Wow. Wow. This is really nice. Now they're used to, babies are always used, whether it's bells or whatever, are used to moss. And as you know, I grow everything in bark. But because this is very nice, fresh, healthy looking moss, and because they're very tiny, I'll probably start out in a bark moss mix until they really start to do, to grow. But I have two. I'm going to look up this one, but I think it... I think it's similar to this one. There was, there was another one that was. Uh, any, I'll have all the information for the next time because it's our supper time, and I'm so excited. I get to pick out some pots, and and tomorrow's watering day, and we'll be doing these. Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you, Donna, for giving me courage somehow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Well, we finished lunch, recharged our energy systems, and we're ready to go at it again. How are you guys today? Well, strange things have been happening around here, but we made it. <laughs> so... Uh, let's see. Let's get on with it. Grab a chair, get something to drink, and make yourself comfortable. <laughs> so, as you know, yesterday, just before dinner time, a package arrived with my new orchid. Well, of course, you know, after I showed everybody and everything, Jack comes out with the box. And he said, he said, do you see that? I said, uh, yeah. He said, it says, fragile, keep it up. And I thought, okay. So up on the box is there. Does it look like it was opened on the upside? <laughs> it's not the fault of the, the, you know, I just do these things. And they did such a nice job of shipping. So I had opened it at the bottom. But uh, Jack said, now you see, you, you were in such a hurry. But he did turn the inside around. It's how it would have been if I opened the right way. Isn't that beautiful? <gasps> it was so nicely wrapped. 
And look at this, and it was in this beautiful little box. And ah, so, um, I'm sorry, I opened it upside down. But they were wrapped so nice inside, it didn't become a problem. So, we had a surprise. I just can't tell you. It's something like you've gone to visit somebody and they have a new little puppy. It's something like the same same kind of feeling. <laughs> Especially the, the surprise of as another orchid. I was so, so surprised. So I thank them for that. I guess because it's Mother's Day or but anyway, I got up this morning and I left it right, them both right here and the moss was quite dry and I missed it and it's already quite dry because it's been two months since we've had any more than a sprinkle of rain. Plus we had one day where a warm wind blew all day. So I have most of my uh, misters on and I've arranged this so after they're potted I'll show you what I've done to help them out. Oh! I forgot the bark. I got it ready. It's been soaking for three to four days. I'll be right back. <laughs> See that, Marilla's? <laughs> okay. Sometimes you start these things and you think you're very well organized. When it really comes down to it, you're not. You're not that well organized, but I'm getting there. And I'm getting better, or worse. Okay, so I want to do, <laughs> I need a little bowl. So just excuse me for a minute while I get a little bowl. Okay. There we go. We don't need a big one. It was orchid watering day this morning, so I was so busy this morning. And then quite often when I'm, well, I'm waiting for them to soak or whatever, then I clean some of the misting bowls and and I was pretty busy, so I got a nice white bowl. I have bark here. And what I'm going to do is quite often, I, as you know, I just raise my orchids in bark. And they're all very healthy. And even through our winters, where, uh, because the furnace is on, because it's so freezing, the humidity is almost very, very, very low. And then come summer, we have a few days where it rains and humidity is good, and it's very, very, very low. So, um, therefore I have misters in different ways, but I'm still raising with just bark. But often I will say, um, sometimes you need a little crutch, and you can leave a little bit of moss with the bark. And for these little babies, because they are babies, I think they need a little bit of crutch. And... I do not want you to confuse the bark, the moss that is around this little orchid. I'm going to show you really close. I don't want you to confuse that with the moss on the grocery store no name hybrid orchids because that moss is so packed and this moss is very very loose so I'm going to put the camera right down here so we can see exactly what is going on so just be a minute there okay that should do it okay so um Let's see, we have two, and this is the one I ordered. This is, I'm going to have trouble with the name, and I don't want to say it wrong. But there we go. 
okay? And the reasons I picked this was because I wanted a mottled leaf. Really bad. I wanted a mottled leaf. And it had the mottled leaf. And I had read about it. And it said some people mount them on bark. And it said um, difficulty beginner. Uh, size medium. Temperature warm. Water wet dry cycle. And that's how I run all my orchids. So I like that. Humidity 60%. Well, our humidity is low. Right now, I'm, I work to keep it around 50. Uh, it's usually around 40, but I do miss extra. So, medium moss bark. So, basically, that's all we know. So, what I've got is two small pots, one for each of them. And I cleaned the pots. And I'm going to put a little bit of bark in the bottom of each one. There. That was a pretty good handful. So, um, I'm going to make a little indentation. Now, that bark does not have any moss in it. Now, let's take the baby out very carefully. Okay. So, you can see the roots are very healthy. Very, very healthy. So, do I want to just shock this and put it completely in bark? No, I don't. And But what I want to do is have it sort of get used to a mixture. Now, we're going to check this plant on a regular basis. Um, there's one funny little thing here. I think I might just pull off there. Other than that, it's perfect. So let's take that off. And just to lay it here for a minute. Now, so I have a bunch of very nice moss that I'm going to use in with the bark. And I picked out, I'll just save this. I might use it when I get further on in. So, okay. So let's put a bit of bark in, into the moss. Now it's going to be in a small pot. And one reason I'm leaving the moss is, as anybody that watches me a lot, I've always said, well, um, I have trouble because of humidity with keeping um, small pots humid enough. So I have a small pot. It has damp bark soaked for four days in seaweed extract in the bottom. And now I have a mixture of moss and bark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the parts where... Maybe I should bring you in even closer if I don't knock this off. Anyway, we're going to... I'm going to, now there's an area where there's uh, more moss, so I think I need to get even in closer. Let's get in closer, and watch this because I have a stool and a piano stool, so let's get right over here, make sure it's not falling off. Sorry about that, but we want to do this right. There we go. Now you can see. Okay. And I think we're safe. Okay, so we have such nice little roots that are used to moss. So I'm just going to wrap some moss. I'm just going to wrap some moss around there, moss and bark around there, and a little bit more moss where there's some bare roots, but there's also some bark in there. And I'm just making a nice little parcel. 
and I'm going to take that parcel and squeeze it down there. Okay. And I'm going to take a little bit more of the balsam bark and I'm going to put it on the side. And on this side. So I'm getting a bark moss mix. Now, this one is right there. I don't, I don't want, I like to plant mine usually a little high. So now, we're not, we haven't squeezed anything together. It's still nice and light and airy. But what I want to do with the other moss and some bark. Still get that used to having the bark in their environment. Okay, now now I have a little bit of moss left, and um, I'm going to wet it a little bit. Now, the, say every morning I wake up and that moss is dry. Now, I don't want to be, um, I do not want to be misting this every day. So, why I've saved some clumps for the top is I'm going to place them on the top. And then in the mornings, if they're dry, I'm just going to pick that off and, and, and put it back. I'd rather than mist every morning and then cause uh, rotting problems, I'm going to do that. Every, every time I see that it looks like it's very dry, I don't want to be watering further down. And because I'm not used to this, I'll be checking it regularly. So it's still light and it's still airy. So I'll just be picking this off, putting it in a little bowl of water, and putting it back. So there we are, and it's Fal Suriana Sogo. So anyway, we're going to put that in there, and... I'll show you where, what we're going to do with that after because we have another one to do. Yes. So, this is the second one. This is, I only ordered one, but I got a Mother's Day gift or, or something. So, I'm quite happy. What does that look like? It's upside down. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. This is so beautiful, and this was this spike, and there's lots of little, little buds here. And then there's another spike right in here. We don't want to upset this. And you can see, even though I missed that this morning, this is, is coming quite dry, and that's our humidity. And that's why I'll explain what I've done more. It's a cute little pot. Okay, let's have a look at this one. There's a little cup. Because they're used to, oh, it's got beautiful roots. So I'll be making sure they stay. But because I don't want to grow in moss, I want them to make the the um, the change. So look at this. They have sent the most beautiful, healthy orchid. Look at that. And I got to keep it like this. So here we are. This is quite dry already, and so I'm going to wet it. I'm 
to wet it nicely. And I'm going to mix some bark with it. And I'll take some out for the top. I'll take some out for the top. And now I'll mix some bark with it. And I'll be checking in with you how it looks each time in case I have to make any adjustments. So, the bark I'm used to. Okay, so we have this all mixed. And we have another little pot all ready to go. These are some pots I was going to get rid of and I didn't have much luck with them but they were someone had thrown them out and I grabbed them <laughs> but they're handy now so I'll put a little bark in the bottom okay and a little of the we'll just carefully wrap it back up Make a little parcel, moss and bark parcel. And I will be checking on it regularly to make sure everything is just fine. Okay. And then over time, if it's growing and doing well, I'll be slowly picking the moss out. <laughs> but I want it to be a, a lot larger plant when I do that. So. This way, I'm not getting rid of everything it's used to. Now, as far as, you know, when you get a hybrid from the grocery store, you don't want to be using that old boss, uh, moss. It's probably acetic. It's been packed, compacted, and uh, so. Now we're going to put the little moss around the top that I can pick off. There we go. Now, um, very hard to find information on this one, but I did find something here. Yeah, it says Phalaenopsis alfina is an orchid hybrid originated by A. Brochart in 2016. It is a cross of a Fel violacea. It is a cross and fell timely, timely, finally, okay. It is considered a primary hybrid because it is a cross between two species. So that is all I could find on it. And we do know it's got some more spikes coming. So now I have two. And I just wanted to show you what I've done and what I'm going to do. So I'll pick up the camera. Now, what I've done here, I think a long time ago, I did this project with something I picked up. And this bowl fit in it. So this bowl has, um, let's see if I can get the right angle here. See the bottom that goes down under? That's where the glass goes down. I have water in there, and I also have some small charcoal pieces, so the water stays sweeter longer. It's not going to smell. I'm not going to be forever washing the rocks. And little bits of charcoal are interspersed between it. So it'll have, they'll have humidity rising from there. So they will go one here and one here. Now the kitchen right here, it gets a fair amount because I'm always running the tap or cooking so we get a little more humidity and then over here we have um, a distiller we run it's in the back and so we get humidity when that's on 
My other orchids are just loving it here because it's getting too hot in the western windows, and I'll show you that in a minute. They have been in bloom since December. So, and up high, I have my mister, and so mist is coming down to them, and they also have humidity coming up, plus they're in the kitchen, somewhere where I can keep my eye on them. <laughs> So that's how that's going to go. I want you to see how I had to balance this camera. I wonder why. There's my piano stool and a bar stool. <laughs> Luckily, everything stayed nicely. So uh, I do want to uh, show you over in the window. See, this window in the afternoon is a west window, and it gets way too hot. And I went and put my blind many years ago up here. So I'm going to order three blinds for near the glass so that I can keep them in this window longer. These misters really help. I think the humidity is staying about 50 uh, right now. What's this one say? Well, this one says 48. So, um... They definitely help, but sometimes in the winter, I'm going to leave the front blind on and the orchids will be more in the window and I put them on different levels with the height and then what I can do is close the front blind and have the humidity get around them if it's a very dry, dry, wintry household day. <laughs> so I want to show you the orchids are still really doing, they're just hanging in, they just keep giving more and more and more. This one's getting a leaf. They love the tropical. This is the leaf that one day it was trying to get real floppy because it hadn't formed. It's nice and thick and I sort of pulled it over with a pipe cleaning stick until it firmed up and stayed where I wanted, so that worked really good. So this I called early bird because she bloomed in December, early December, started in November, and now she's got a nice long spike again. And moon glow, so they have been flowering, dropping some, but still keep going. So those are the misters. They really help. So let's go back into the other room. So I have a fan on. You can see it's blowing the mist around. So uh, this is my basket. It's doing really well. These were some small ones I had in the greenhouse. They were really suffering. Some I had in here. Something had got taken off of this leaf. But they're all perking up. They're all perking up. So. Everything's coming nicely. And of course the dendrobiums, they get lots of light because this has a glass top. This is a garden window. So they get lots of light. So they're happy here. Because the nights are still a little cold outside for me to be putting them out there. And I have another mister just thrown in a tall container. And it's in this corner. And I moved one to this corner. So these guys are getting humidity too. And it's still, oh, about 50. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> so... That's how we're doing here, and we'll be keeping an eye on our babies. I'll just go over and show you the armorellis. It's the last one. I've had the colored ones in, and then the white one decided I was out watering the lemon tree in the greenhouse, and I seen this all opening, and it's just loaded, and there's another one back there. That's it for now. Thanks for 
joining me and we'll be keeping an eye on those little babies. Thank you.